introduce them for us? I would love to do so. In the bottom left spawning position, we've got, playing for Team Liquid, the blue Zerg player. It is the little one. And in the top left spawn position on this beautiful yellow map, Aculon Wastes, we've got the red Protoss player. It's FXO's Baby Knight. Indeed we do. So, in terms of strategy we are likely to see from these two, as we said, men uh, as we previously mentioned, TLO has been doing an absolutely sensational job so far in this tournament. I didn't, did he actually drop a map in the group play yesterday? Yeah, I believe he did drop uh, a map or two. I'm actually... Gonna be checking that right now. Yes, he listed, he did lose three maps. He did go 5-0 yep. in his group. So he was he the only person to no him and Hero Marine and Rhett were the only people to actually go 5-0. So yep. they are probably the favourites now at the moment. I know all the TL players are doing really, really, uh, really solid. To be honest, and they're just chilled out. Yeah, TLO did lose a map uh, against Hasuobs in the group stages, so he has lost against Protoss in this tournament. So maybe, uh, maybe. Baby Knight has seen that game and has seen the way where, uh, has, where Hasuobs was able to beat TLO in games and might be using that strategy to his advantage. But let's get into this game. Baby Knight not going to be opening with the Forge. And I really feel like the gateway openers are becoming more and more popular. We've definitely seen more gateway openers versus Zerg than we have seen Forge expansion builds. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things which can be very effective. Baby Knight is a massive fan of this. And I've seen him doing on ladder so, so much. He, he just favors it ultimately due to the fact that it allows him to put on some pressure. He likes using the Mothership Core. And it allows him to transition into a lot of things. You can go very economical out of it, taking a quick third, because you've gained map dominance. You've forced a lot of units. You've got a Zerg player a bit frustrated and annoyed. They're not going to be able to just mass up to go for a big, say, 11-minute push. Then what you can do is take the third. Alternatively, you can transition into just a lot of aggression. You can get out additional gateways. You can get out of Stargate if you want to. You can get out of Robo. Everything is still on the cards. And that makes it difficult for a Zerg. And the one thing I really think that um, many people don't realize is even if this push with just, say, a Zealot, it's going to be two Zealots now, even if it doesn't kill a drone, it will make TLO, it, well, he has to make Zerglings to defend this. And if he's made Zerglings, he's going to have a lower drone count. And he's got units which are effectively useless going into the later stages because he's going to have a wall off, he's going to have a cannon, you can't do anything. Yeah, we have seen Baby Knight do this before in the, the group stages yesterday. He makes two Zealots, gets to the Mothership Core, and he pressures with that, which is a little bit different from what we see a lot of other Protoss players do. They like to get a Zealot, a Stalker, a Mothership Core, maybe even a second Stalker and pressure with that because the Stalkers, when they come out, there's not going to be any kind of speed, they can micro pretty well. But Baby Knight really favoring the way of the two Zealots. And this is, well, as you said, the Zealot Stalker is something that you can see. Two Zealots just means it forces more Lings, because once you start getting up a greater number of Zealots, especially if they get in a good position backs against the wall, they can tank incredible amounts of damage, kill a lot of Zerglings, and already we're seeing TLO being forced to make more Lings. He's only got two more out at the moment. The Queens are going to do quite a good job. And I like the way Baby Knight just checks for the third, making sure that's not coming down, because that could potentially be a nice, easy pick-off. Mm -hmm. And TLO's reaction's fine. He doesn't want that quick third. He didn't blindly make it at, say, four minutes, because Baby Knight is only just getting his natural nexus now. Yeah, this is really typical TLO playstyle here. He doesn't grab his third super early versus Protoss anymore. As we see the first two Zealots starting to harass the Queens a little bit. That one Queen is becoming dangerously low. I think one of them is at least going to fall. A time warp goes down to help take out that one Queen. The second Queen is getting really low on HP. Might be able to get another one. Nice pick off there. And two Queens have gone down. The Mothership Core is even going to stay alive. Wow. That was some really effective harassment there by Baby Knight. Taking out two Queens at the cost of only two Zealots. Now, the lucky thing for TLO is he did have two spares, so he can keep injecting. That's, if he didn't have an injecting queen in one of those hatches, it would have knocked him a lot further back. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what's lost, behind this baby knight, he's still pumping out probes. He's still got his natural nexus just about to complete, and he's going into a stargate. And I think that stargate is a wise choice on this map. It's based around the main. It'll be interesting to see whether he gets an oracle or whether he favors, say, Phoenix, just to pick off overlords around the map and just to really try and get some pickups and do a nice little bit of damage. Yeah, it's probably going to be an Oracle follow-up. That's really what we've seen out of Protoss players in this tournament. And I want to talk about TLO's build a little bit more. He, I've um, been watching a lot of his stream. I've been seeing his games at this event, obviously. And he's been doing this against Protoss a lot. He doesn't grab an early third base. He grabs four queens really quickly and then starts mining gas and really delays his third quite a bit, as we can really see in this game right now. Of course, delaying the third is going to be reactive f for a big part because yep. he did lose two queens early on and has to play a little bit more careful because in a normal situation... Ooh, wow. Talk this about is a, not a normal situation. Yeah, this is perfect. He's going for a Roachling all in. 
pretty much. That's what he's got. He's got three gas. That's straight away the indicator. He's also got ro uh, Zergling Speed nearly finished up. He's got 11 roaches coming. So the roaches will start going over. Then he'll use the next injects worth of lava, which are just popping now to make a whole ton of lings. There we go, just as I thought. And against what Baby Knight's done, this could be a very, very quick first game because there's only one Oracle out, a second on its way. Uh -oh. There are a few gateways and a few sentries, but there's basically Baby Knight hasn't noticed this coming and therefore he's he, not gonna have enough units. He's got no DPS out whatsoever. He's got two zealots. Oh my goodness, his mothership centuries. calls on the other side of the map as well. Oh, but he, no, he sees it! He sees it, the mothership calls scouts a couple of the roaches coming across. This is really, really critical. Now he should go into not a panic mode, but he should know precisely what's coming. He should warp in some more sentries where he's get more force fields. He may even potentially want to throw down a cannon, but here we go. The roaches, the zerglings are starting to push up. There's the force field he needs, but those sentries taking a bit of damage. He lost one sentry there who's blocking the entrance. That's a big loss. You need every sentry you can possibly get in this kind of situation. Baby Knight now constructing a cannon, but that cannon is late. The wall falls, and there's no force speed. That, of course, is really late. No force speed on the bottom either. The sentries are getting surrounded here. And oh my god, TLO is going to be pushing in there. This is not looking good for Baby Knight, who's also in the supply block. The first Void Ray is about to come out, but I think it's going to be too little too late for the Danish player here. Yeah, as he said, the problem is that sentry got taken out and the mothership caught on the other side of the map means no photon overcharge still. It's desperately trying to get back because that would really help some DPS. The void rate is now in play. It's doing a little bit of damage, but GG.